We got going. There we go. Ron West, Business Broker Express. Thanks so much for taking some time today with us. Um, we're looking forward to having this industry news update with Bob House from Biz by Sell Biz Quest. Um, while we uh, just get everybody situated into Zoom here, I'm just going to run through a few industry announcements. Um, so, uh, so first of all, I uh, want to just point out, highlight that all of our past and upcoming webinars are on our website, businessbrokeragepress.com. You'll see a webinars tab and you'll see all of the uh, past webinars and we have a search and filter feature there now since we've gone over a hundred different industry webinars and podcasts there. So you can filter through the different channels or do a keyword search. And then you can see and register for all the upcoming industry webinars, whether they're through Business Broker Express or Biz by Sell or IBBA, uh, a bunch of different groups, uh, uh, Jim Parker down in Florida, et cetera. So uh, these are three that we've done just in the last week or so. Uh, one with Patrick Fendaro, he uh, talked about foreign buyers and the, and the visas uh, to work with international buyers. That was really interesting and unique. Uh, we had our industry access last week. Um, uh, that if you missed that, that was a great update from the industry. We had uh, a Barry on from IBBA and Steve Denny gave a, a CARES Act update. And then we had uh, Jim Parker did a webinar on the importance of buyer seller meetings. So I thought that was really interesting. Well done. If you didn't watch those three, I would really recommend looking at those. Uh, we posted some new articles on our website this week. They're on the homepage of Business Broker Express for your reading. Um, and I just want to highlight just one of our services, uh, Deal Studio. This is, um, people sometimes ask how we make money. And, and so if you don't know of Deal Studio, we do websites and systems marketing for the business brokerage industry. That's deal-studio.com. We'd love to tell you more about that uh, if you have any interest. Uh, we've got some upcoming industry webinars. Um, uh, uh, Steve and Terry are doing uh, theirs later today. And then uh, one that we're highlighting right now is Daryl Arney is going to come in and do a two-part series on the M&A process. Um, and that will be really a great, if you don't know Daryl, he's been in this business a long time and we're excited to have him join us. Uh, we've got some other webinars posted on our website, but those are just a few highlights. Uh, some past industry webinars and podcasts. These are just things that are going on in the industry from the AMAA and, and Built to Sell Radio um, IBBA, uh, Jim Parker, Marvin Storm does an excellent podcast with uh, business brokers talking about their transactions. Um, you know, I think it's three that have gone well, three that didn't go well type thing. Um, IBBA is doing their podcast. Um, so just definitely keep a lookout for those. Some excellent podcasts and webinars going on in our industry. Uh, industry events, we're excited to see the associations and groups trying to um, whether it be virtual or live, have their meetings, have their conferences. Um, IBBA just wrapped up their virtual conference. The AMAA is about to start their virtual conference. Um, and then you can see some other uh, things such as the IBBA is going to do a recasting and pricing virtual summit. Uh, and uh, they're also going to do, um, and then you can see the other associations out there and what they're doing uh, in the next few months. Definitely want to, since Bob's with us, want to Feature our sponsor of the week, Made Sense at Biz by Sell, uh, promoted. Uh, if you're not familiar, I think most are, but we want to thank Biz by Sell for their sponsorship with us. And then thank you to all of our sponsors uh, that make this possible. So uh, with that said, I'd love to uh, introduce Bob House from Biz by Sell BizQuest. He's the president. And uh, today he's going to be giving us a state of the market uh, from some, uh, some information that they've gathered for the industry, and, and this is available to you, but he's going to run through about 30 minutes of presenting the information, and then again, we'll take some Q&A after his presentation. So, Bob, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks, Ron. Really appreciate uh, you having me, and uh, really think it's uh, fantastic what you and George are doing, uh, showing great leadership, bringing the industry together with all these different uh, webinars you're, you're leading weekly, so... Uh, glad to share what uh, what we have uh, today, and if I can share my screen here, we'll get started. All right, let me get the presentation out here. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep, perfect. Sure. Okay, fantastic. So uh, we're happy to share um, our view of what's going on in the market, and obviously we're in a unique position with 
uh, having this large uh, marketplace where we see a lot of uh, supply and a lot of demand and uh, uh, traffic and, and uh, you know, supply and, and uh, transactions ultimately re being reported on the platform. So I'm gonna walk through a couple of different data sets today and uh, all this is available on our site. Uh, and you can read it uh, in depth and explore it and I encourage you to all do that. Ron introduced me, so I won't uh, belabor this, but uh, I've been with uh, Biz by Cell for eight years. Uh, prior to that, I was also in the small business kind of online digital space with another company called allbusiness.com that uh, was a Dun & Bradstreet company. And so I've been for 15 years, I've been building digital communities and online uh, resources for small businesses. In fact, when I was at All Business, Biz by Cell was a, a partner and uh, we actually carried Biz by Cell listings on the website at that time. Uh, so my background's in product management, building these uh, digital communities, um, but I've also done startups most of my career. And at one point I actually ran a, a travel business, uh, started and ran a travel business. I think most of you are aware of, uh, about us and uh, you know, what we offer. Uh, the Biz by Sell Network mission is to connect buyers, owners, tenants, and brokers in the largest, most active business for sale marketplace, providing listings and information to help people ultimately uh, transition businesses. So, uh, you know, these are our brands. Um, we've recently added LoopNet at the end of last year. They're uh, advertising on our network. You'll be obviously on our, our two uh, leading business for sale brands, Biz by Sell and BizQuest, but also now you can go to LoopNet and on the homepage, you'll see a tab there for businesses for sale. And that is really starting to ramp uh, and grow um, uh, as uh, we've launched that. Plus our partner sites, the Wall Street Journal and, and, and many others. Um, you know, as we have a unique, over a million unique um, buyers every month to this network and over two and a half million visits. So it's a very engaged audience, um, largest broker directory, and, uh, you know, lots of uh, choice between uh, established businesses, asset sales, uh, franchises, et cetera. Um, obviously, we're part of CoStar Group, and, and CoStar Group operates a number of marketplaces. In addition to its commercial real estate information, service, there's uh, the apartment space and the land for sale and, and the like. So uh, this uh, scale of marketplaces around um, commercial uh, real estate. So what are we gonna cover today? Again, as I mentioned, we have um, a couple of data sets I wanna walk you through. And the first will be our inside report. We've been publishing this quarterly since 2007. So we've seen a, a, a range of markets, obviously during that time frame from the last recession in, in 09 to kind of the current situation. So, and, and then the run up in between. Um, so I'm gonna make those of you who are not familiar with it a little more familiar with that report. And then lately we've been trying to do surveys right around the uh, release of our report to more directly ask the marketplace uh, questions around uh, you know, topics that are, are kind of top of mind or, or issues in the market at that time. So we did that the first week of July, and that's gonna be the second data set that I go through, and it talks about how owners and buyers are kind of looking at the market. I'll do my best to uh, you know, pull out the crystal ball and wish we all had one uh, to know what's gonna happen next, and, uh, but we do have some thoughts on it, and I think it's gonna be largely dependent on what happens with the virus and how we get it under control, but uh, we will cover that at the end. And lastly, as Ron mentioned, I'm happy to take your questions on anything around this, these, this data set. So second quarter, let's talk about what uh, happened. Again, our insight report, um, it's a nationally recognized um, you know, economic indicator. See if I can minimize this so that I can see everything. Um, again, we've been doing this since 2007. If you get Google Biz by Sell Insight Report, uh, this will be the number one result. Uh, you can come to this page. We have along the top some uh, navigation elements, the interactive market data, which is the uh, second screen there that shows the map. Uh, if you go into that, you can filter by closed transactions, active business listings, you can narrow in on a uh, specific market. So it's a really neat way to see what's going on in your market, in, in your uh, region. Um, the Q2 data tables have a wealth of information around um, uh, market data as well by, by the top 40 metro markets, but also has like multiples and sale prices, median sale prices, and median cash flow, and things like that for by industry. So it's really worth exploring those data tables. There's a lot of great information in there uh, about how different types of businesses are selling. 
Um, and then you can read our report archive, which has all the past reports and, and our analysis. So we've really been trying to build out the analysis uh, part of this report, which is the, uh, the, you know, what you can read when you go to this page. And I wanted to give a shout out to Adam, our marketing manager, who I hope's on the line. Um, he's been putting a ton of work into uh, gathering all this information, uh, making sense of it, uh, writing the report. Um, obviously, it's a team effort with our analytics team, and, and, and I obviously weigh in, but uh, he does a lot of the heavy lifting as well as with the surveying. So uh, thanks to Adam, and happy birthday, by the way. It's Adam's birthday today. Yeah. Um, so uh, again, uh, we do this. One is I want to thank the brokerage community for participating in this. This is voluntary. Brokers uh, submit these, this information uh, when they take listings off our platform. Uh, it enables us to do this. It enables us to talk to the market, talk to the press about what's going on in the industry. It does result in uh, kind of media exposure for, uh, for the industry and the uh, uh, you know, transition of businesses. Um, and so uh, we couldn't do it without you. It's very easy when you um, go to delete a listing, you simply submit uh, whether it's sold and the sale price. We ask that you, you know, keep your, enter your cash flow and financials, uh, the, you know, the revenue and the cash flow and, and have it as accurate as possible so that this data is as high quality as possible. We don't have the bandwidth to validate it. Um, it's really meant to be directional and show trends and get ballparks of evaluation, not meant to replace any kind of formal valuation process. But anyway, that's um, again, an overview of the insight report. So what happened? Well, Q2 is a quarter like uh, we hadn't seen since you'd have to go all the way back to 2009 to see something and as a, a big a change in, in a quarter. But we, saw, we started to see it at the end of Q1, about midway through March, uh, the transactions really slowed down as everybody scrambled and started to shelter in place. And, um, and so uh, that carried into April and, and actually had, April was the bottom of what we saw around reported transactions, they dropped. 51% in April compared to the a year ago, April. Um, overall, there was a recovery in the quarter. I'll show that on the next slide, but uh, there was a, a total drop in the quarter of 39% year over year, which was the largest year over year decline since Q2 of 2009 during the Great Recession, which fell 50% in the quarter. What happened? Well, again, people were scrambling, buyers paused their search, lenders froze approvals, you know, cash flow was impacted by these businesses. Uh, people just were kind of holding on you know, the giant pause to figure out what this meant, what was going to happen. So if you look at the story within the quarter, though, it's quite interesting. And again, this, there'll be, uh, this story of uh, this data will show, obviously, uh, an impact of small businesses, an impact in the transfer of these small businesses, but also signs of recovery and um, optimism and opportunity. So uh, these are the year-over-year -year, um, change in transactions by month. And you can see that while it was a 51% drop in April, it rebounded 12 points to 39% in May, and it was down only 27% in June. So uh, showing improvement. And uh, you know what happened during this time frame? Well, uh, the country started to reopen, right? Um, in our survey, we asked owners in early July what, what had happened and, and they told us about shutting down. They told us about reopening. 71% of them had reopened by, by that time frame. Um, lenders had resumed lending, uh, you know, the stimulus, uh, the CARES Act and the SBA benefit of six months of, um, of a principal and interest coverage uh, by the SBA was uh, stimulating acquisitions and, and traffic returned and, and ultimately listings started returning as well. So, um, Here's a, a view actually of that traffic and you can see what happened, this is traffic and leads. And um, you know, right around mid-March mid when all the shelter orders started going into place, uh, we saw a decline in, in people coming to the site and, and searching for businesses. We probably hit the bottom about 25% below uh, where it was you know, pre-pandemic. And, but it, it was very short lived as you can see. It was, it was down really only for a week before it started really starting to Cover and edge upwards. This, these are seven day moving averages across the network. And um, it had pretty much re reached the same level as the uh, before the pandemic by the end of April. And then it's been on a steady climb since then. And, and actually, in, you know, in the last week, we're, we're up 
year over year and at all time highs on traffic and leads um, uh, where, where we've ever been. So it's, it's, um, it's really rebounded. There's a, a, clearly a lot of new buyers in the marketplace. There's a lot of new people who uh, are gonna be uh, transitioning from one thing to another. Clearly a lot of new unemployed corporate refugees and the like. And so we're seeing a lot and people are also spending a lot more time online. So we're seeing a lot more activity uh, searching the platform. So, you know, we, we try to, um, for the last you know, six quarters or so, we've been reaching out and really trying to bring broker perspective into our report. And uh, Jay offered this um, this time. Jay's with uh, Viking Mergers and Acquisitions in Charlotte. You know, the panic changed toward the end of May. At that point, we understood what we were dealing with and the appropriate way to view financials in light of it. You know, demand recovered, listings started to return, and deals were happening again. This obviously is uh, in line with what I just shared on the previous slides um, and what we're seeing. What's interesting is the businesses that did sell, those uh, nearly 1,500 reported comps, um, actually were uh, fairly strong businesses. And that might seem surprising at, at first, but uh, when you think about it, um, the deals that got across the goal line were the stronger deals, the bigger businesses, the more valuable businesses, the, uh, the more resilient businesses in this environment. And so it's maybe with that context, uh, less surprising that the median revenue was pretty stable and the median cash flow ticked up a little bit. Um, you know, low, there's low risk and reliable cash flow and there's limited availability of these kind of businesses. So that's why they uh, perform well for the reported transactions. Here's another uh, uh, perspective from Andy, uh, in, uh, CEO of Calhoun Companies in uh, Minnesota. Uh, and he points out if your goal is to buy a business that's been profitable during the pandemic, you're gonna pay a premium for the reduced risk. Uh, you know, the business is withstanding a pandemic after all, so it should be good to go moving forward. And I think that's borne out in the, uh, the metrics that we I just shared. If, uh, you know, we're, we're looking for this kind of perspective and testimonials. So as we uh, go into our Q3 Insight Report, we, we do reach out. And uh, if you have unique market perspective you'd like to offer and, and like to be in the report, please reach out to us and uh, reach out to uh, just, you can contact us on our contact form on our site and we'll make sure you get over to Adam and, uh, and he can talk to you about that. So um, finally, uh, here's Q2 small business values. This is asking price is in the black. And uh, it was, if you compare it to Q2 a year ago, it was uh, pretty flat. Um, sale price is actually higher again, um, up 6.1% to 286,000. Uh, again, these are mediums, right? We look at the midpoint. So there's a range of businesses from you know, very high end businesses in the millions to very low end businesses in the tens of thousands. But the, mid, the midpoint of the transactions reported is 286,000. Um, so again, overall, pretty strong. Again, uh, not surprising given that the, the stronger deals made it across the goal line. I guess the one exception was in the restaurants area and not surprising there that the, we saw 25% drop in the median sale price. Um, and we also had a 54% drop in transactions, which uh, compared to the 39% from the entire quarter shows that restaurants you know, we had fewer transactions overall as a category than, than the entire um, uh, data set. And that's a fairly large category. So they were a good uh, part of that drop in the overall data set. Okay, so that's the insight report. Um, again, that's a view of kind of what actually was reported as sold and, and what those businesses looked like. Now I wanna jump over to the survey results. Uh, again, we, 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 we hit our lists um, and we invite uh, uh, buyers and owners to uh, answer a bunch of questions. So we surveyed and got actually our largest response ever around how the pandemic has impacted them. Over 3,100 people responded to the survey. We asked them questions around operations and headcount, how it's impacted customer demand, uh, how it's impacted their acquisition or exit timelines. Um, and, and finally, their transition motivations and, and, and opportunities they're seeing. So the, uh, serve, the full survey you can get from the Insight Report, and there's a link to it, and you can actually look at every single question we answered, the number of respondents to each question, and uh, it, it's, it's all there. You can see the exact questions we asked. But I've got some summaries of kind of the highlights in this deck. So um, 
we started with owners and what was the initial shutdown impact on owners? And here's one of the primary questions we asked, which of the following applies to your business as a result of COVID-19, um, state and local shutdowns. And you can see that 52% were either to, required to entirely close their business or um, sus partially suspend some operations. Um, in, uh, it, you can see the di differences by the cross tabs at the bottom there. You can see that restaurants were particularly hard and uh, more, more impacted. In fact, four out of five restaurants were forced to close or suspend their operations. Um, service was the least impacted. And you can see that only 18% of the service businesses required to close uh, their business. Um, and then separate questions we asked about like, how, how is demand impacted? How is customer demand impacted by the pandemic? 59% said they saw reduced customer demand. Not surprising. What might be surprising is how many saw increased and we'll get to that in a later slide. And then finally, 55% of businesses with employees were forced to lay off or furlough those employees. So you can see the impact that the uh, shutdown orders had on owners. But, but if, again, when we then uh, fast forward to early July, what's happened since that shutdown, 71% uh, of, of these um, owners had reopened or resumed operations. And if you break that out further, it's 60% of closed business reopened and 78% of suspended, uh, partially suspended operations had resumed those operations. So, um, Here's the surprising thing, and, and maybe it's not surprising, but in any kind of disruptive event like the, this pandemic, there's always opportunity. And there are plenty of examples of uh, business categories and businesses that are not only doing just fine during this period, but are actually seeing increased demand. In fact, 18% are seeing increased demand due to the pandemic, uh, led by retail at 28%. A, a good chunk as well, and I don't remember the exact number, and this would be in the full report if you look for it, is uh, a good chunk are not seeing any change in the man. It's been pretty steady. So um, plenty of businesses are faring well out there. 60% um, of the businesses that were forced to lay off employees though, um, have started rehiring them by, by early July. But there's some challenges um, and changes in, in that workforce. Uh, it's been well documented. There's a very timely topic with what's going on in Congress this week. The uh, $600 in uh, weekly unemployment benefits uh, made it a challenge in rehiring employees for 52% of these owners, um, as you can see here. That again by restaurant um, at 61% if you break it out by these, these different uh, industry sectors. Uh, so uh, clearly it is an issue. I know uh, uh, Congress is looking to address it. We'll see what comes out of that. 68% um, of owners um, indicated that their employees are concerned about returning to work, concerned about the health safety of returning to work specifically, um, either for themselves or for uh, customers. 28% um, of these employers gave employees the option to work from home and 64% of them actually plan to continue that benefit post pandemic. So it's interesting to see how this event um, is just changing work habits and uh, how those might persist after we get out of this environment. Um, so, uh, how did it, you know, many owners are, uh, obviously on our platform looking to exit at some point or thinking about exit and having a transition plan. So we asked them specifically how the pandemic had impacted their exit strategy. And here's their responses in the chart. Uh, you can see that 16% planned exit earlier as a result of the pandemic. 21% decided to uh, exit later. They're going to uh, pause their exit plans. And then the rest hadn't really changed their plans or maybe worked on a succession plan. Uh, again, you can see the impact on restaurant. They're more likely to uh, want to exit sooner than the other industries um, and, uh, compared to retail or service. So um, most though owners haven't adjusted their exit timeline. Um, and 58% uh, uh, of owners, by the way, uh, we have a very active uh, group of serial entrepreneurs on our platform. And 58% of the owners surveyed plan to buy another business. So while they might be exiting this one, uh, they're, they're looking to get into other areas. And what are those reasons? Why do they want to look for other businesses? Well, these were the uh, reasons that this existing business owners said they were looking to buy another business. You can see that 34% of owners are seeking an acquisition to expand, either a better location, a new location, or add 
vertically uh, product or service offerings uh, into their, uh, their business, their existing business. Clearly a lot of looking for um, a, uh, a new venture as well, being a very entrepreneurial group. Um, separately, we asked them uh, why you think now is the time to buy a new business. And in that second bullet there, you can see that 55% feel the time is right to get a good value. So there's the sense that uh, there may be a buying opportunity in the market. Um, although on the other hand, 32% see an emerging opportunity. So they see some change and they want to pursue that emerging opportunity. So those were the two top responses to that question about why now is a good time to buy for uh, existing owners. Um, you can see, um, and, then when, and then when we asked them about their purchase timeline, 42% uh, of existing owners had accelerated their plans to purchase as a result of the pandemic. Again, driven by the top two reasons uh, given above in that second bullet. Um, interestingly, or maybe surprisingly, is 62% uh, said they would consider buying a closed business and 80% said they would consider buying a business that was negatively impacted by the pandemic. So um, again, I think that speaks to um, looking for deals and the opportunity to um, opportunistically uh, pick up better locations, uh, real estate, um, you know, and the like. Um, we also asked buyers, uh, these are non-owners, but just this business buyers. Um, some of them might have been former owners, but they're not currently owners. And we asked them, why do you believe now is the right time uh, for you to buy a business? And you can see a similar kind of response here um, to the owners. Uh, they believe they can get a good value right now. Um, but you can see that they also see emerging opportunity and 28% uh, uh, are newly unemployed and looking to be in more control of their future through uh, business ownership. So corporate refugees and, and others who think this isn't a good time for me to go into business for myself um, are, are uh, in this cohort, obviously, in pretty large numbers. Um, but this group does have access to liquid capital and 47% plan to put 20% or more down. 5% are all cash buyers. So um, anyway, quite interesting to see what buyers are saying about why now is a, an interesting time for them to buy. Um, when we asked these buyers again, uh, what are you looking for in a business purchase? What type of business are you looking for? Um, Actually, the majority, 72%, were looking for a business that was uh, re resilient to the pandemic and um, you know, was mostly profitable or unaffected uh, during the pandemic and likely to continue. There may be a disconnect between that and their expectation that they can get a deal, <laughs> but, um, but that's, uh, that's their uh, response. 28% uh, though said specifically they wanna buy a depressed business and hold on to it. Uh, and they see opportunity coming up the backside of this pandemic. Um, obviously, that's going to cost less, but carry more risk. And then finally, um, a, a good chunk, 22%, you know, did indicate they were looking to pick up commercial real estate location, either property or the lease, um, you know, and securing prime locations without having to pay for a cash flow of the business. So it would be, uh, you know, sale of assets and, uh, and picking up, you know, closed businesses. So um, that's buyers. And then asking them again, like what their timeline, their purchase timeline, they're fairly motivated. They're looking to do this within 60% uh, said within six months, probably looking to capitalize on the window of uncertainty. Um, and 35% had uh, actually accelerated their plans to buy a business um, uh, due to the pandemic. We asked that same question of these owners, uh, how has the pandemic affected your purchase timeline? And 35% have said it could move it up. Um, and again, this is, speaks to some of the demand on the site. 40% are attempting to fast track an acquisition to take advantage of that CARES Act benefit of six months of free uh, principal and interest by the SBA. So that is drawing a surge, uh, surge in activity now. It's, we're pretty much at the end of the you know, timeline. If you don't have your documents in at this point, you're not gonna get across the goal line by September 27th. But uh, anyway, um, it has driven a lot of activity. So um, with that, um, I'll spend a few minutes on kind of outlook and uh, again, reaching my crystal ball with this I can. I, I will caveat all this again with saying that I think, you know, we saw a lot of this data came at the end of the quarter and the beginning of uh, July with the survey. And, you know, cases were just starting to pick up around that time frame, And uh, 
and you've seen a lot of the kind of macroeconomic indicators in the press that shows that you know, job, jobless claims are, are actually going up again and, and, and consumer spending is, is pulling back in, in a number of areas. So it's going to depend on what happens there. If we can, it seems like in some of these southern states, we're starting to reach a peak and, um, and uh, California as well, where we're located. Uh, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, get the virus under control and continue that trajectory we were on coming through, uh, through June. Um, and that's, that's kind of what this outlook is based on, the assumption that we can do that. So um, we believe buyer demand is going to continue. I mean, there's historically low interest rates out there. Uh, max rate on a Sunday loan of 6%, lowest since 2008, unlikely to go up anytime soon. Um, again, that CARES Act has driven a lot of awareness um, in the marketplace. And whether or not people reach this deadline, they've kind of opened their eyes to business uh, purchase and, and buying a business. And so I think we're going to continue to see buyer demand uh, there. Um, there is safety in COVID resilient businesses, and I'll cover some categories here in a minute. Um, and these businesses businesses are well positioned to you know, provide security uh, during this time frame. Um, there's going to be people looking to do low cost entry via distressed businesses. Uh, there's going to be a lot of closures, unfortunately, particularly in the hospitality space and, and the restaurant industry. And that's going to provide an opportunity to acquire assets, equipment, inventory, uh, real estate, and the likes. And finally, uh, as mentioned before, you know, there's this whole new wave of buyers out there. And we saw it in the last recession in 2009, and uh, they're seeking business ownership as a uh, uh, path forward. So we think that buyer demand is going to continue to be robust um, and, and active on the platform. Again, you know, entrepreneurs are masters at finding opportunity during disruption and uh, whether it's a, uh, pivoting their existing business, even in, in the restaurant space, there's lots of examples of restaurants pivoting to digital ordering and takeout and delivery models. Um, you know, so whether they're pivoting or whether they're just categories that are well suited to times, we, we hear lots of examples. These are just some categories that are doing well right now. Uh, home improvement services, you know, uh, central retailers, I'm just jumping around the list here. Um, uh, obviously, uh, anything online and digital is going to be doing very well. Um, essential services, uh, finance, financial services. There's, there's plenty of examples if you look for them out there, and I'm sure you all have great examples as well in your businesses. If you haven't seen the Yelp Economic Average Report, it's an interesting report that they also publish quarterly. And they publish on their search activity on their platform for uh, certain business categories. And the idea being that as consumers get more confident to uh, resume activities, they're going to be searching for those types of businesses. And, uh, and so you can see the trend here. And so uh, there's clearly categories with sustaining and increased interest. Um, it's a good time to be in the, the guns and ammo business. Uh, but also bike rentals um, are surging. Um, you can see again the home services, appliances, repair, and plumbing. Um, but you can also see that uh, you know there are things that are bouncing back that show people are getting back out there. You know, hair hair care, um, you know, uh, equipment rental, um, you know, and the like. So um, it's an interesting report to look at. Um, they do talk about the number of businesses that are going that have indicated they've closed permanently, and it's a big number. Um, and so that's going to also present, you know, present opportunity in the market, um, both for, you know, both well, for buyers who are looking to, to maybe uh, move into those areas. So um, take a look at that. Finally, I'll just a uh, couple more slides and then I'm ready to uh, wrap up and uh, open it up for some questions. But, um, you know, there's still, as we know, a lot of pent up supply out there and, and we believe this is still going to be coming. Um, I think the, the pandemic has been a wake up call for many boomers. Um, many of them have thriving businesses and, and uh, you know, maybe they want to hold on to them during this time period, or maybe they realize that that's this benefit may be short lived and then maybe, maybe no better time to get out um, than now. Um, you know, I think everybody's realizing that there is more to life than uh, working all the time. And, and I think uh, a lot of these baby boomers may be uh, ready to, uh, you know, look at retirement and, and exit other businesses. Um, you know, if particularly if you've survived the last downturn, you know, maybe you just don't want to try to, you know, be, uh, deal with this kind of uh, period of uh, uncertainty coming out of this, this uh, cycle. 
Um, again, Yelp's indicated that 72,000 of these uh, businesses on their platform have kind of permanently closed as of July 10th. You know, these owners will try to get something for their business assets or their businesses. And so there's going to be opportunity there um, and, and supply that's uh, available and going to come onto the, uh, the marketplace. And then lastly, you know, I know there's a lot of uh, talk around in this industry around the PPP loans and their um, the difficulties of transferring these from from one uh, you know, owner to a new buyer. And, and as these as those issues get resolved through either uh, you know changing legislation around it or as they expire, uh, those businesses will be pent up supply as well and, and hit the market. So um, we think there's more supply coming as well. I'm going to finish on this and just like during these times, I, I, this is the only, I guess, um, thing that may impact this, but I saw specifically for you is just don't ignore your online marketing. Uh, realize, and we asked also buyers, um, how has this period affected your um, searching online for, for a business uh, to buy? And 32% indicated they're searching more online. So it's never been more important to have your online marketing in a, in a great uh, position. Um, really worth taking the time to, these are things that we always preach and if you've been to our past webinars, you know, uh, we do monthly broker webinars around how to get the most out of your investment in our platform, but it's around uh, completing your brokerage profile, making sure that you're professionally represented, uh, represented uh, so that your clients will trust you over your competition and want to uh, have you represent their businesses. Um, you know, uh, surprising to me always that we have a number of brokers who just don't take the time to upload a photo or build out a description of their services or their specializations or how they can help them. Um, and then, you know, strategically market your listings. You know, if you're in a niche or a competitive market, you, you may need to think about upgrades or um, just at least be looking at your listing stats and make adjustments to kind of uh, copy and, and content to make sure you're getting a good response during this time. Um, that is it for my kind of prepared uh, uh, deck. So I'll stop sharing here so I can see you all again. Hey, we have uh, Daniel Crespo, I think, has a question. He's got his hand raised, so I'm going to bring him on. Daniel, if you can unmute yourself. He was early on, so he might be on a phone call or something like that. But did anybody else would like to raise your can, virtual Can, can you hear me now? There we can is. hear you, Daniel. There yes, you are. Uh, my apologies to all that uh, when, I, when I raised my hand, I was in the beginning. I actually made a mistake. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, was, I, I must say, I was very impressed with Mr. Bob House, and I'm glad I joined this. Very impressed. Very impressive. Well, thank you, Chris. I okay. appreciate that comment. Glad you joined us. And that's all I have to say. All <laughs> right. I, I'm Thank you. Listening. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, sir. Thank you. If anybody else there, I think we've got uh, Bill White there would like to join us there. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you, Bill? Bill? Oh, doing well. Doing well. Uh, my question is for Bob about Biz by Sell, and uh, I, you know, I've been a customer with Biz by Sell for many years, and my father was a customer for many years before I was a business broker, so we're very familiar with your services. Uh, over the last few years, we had a great customer service representative who shall remain nameless, who's no longer with your company, and we've lost our ability to have good conversations with people at Biz by Sell about how to utilize your services and products. Every time we call in, it seems to be an endless loop. Uh, are you guys working on that? Do you have somebody in customer service to work with the brokerage industry a little bit uh, that's designated for that? Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Bill. Um, I, I would love to have a follow-up conversation with you uh, kind of after this to kind of explore more specifically what, what, what your uh, issues are, but um, that's certainly not what we aspire to uh, have from our uh, customer service group and um, we do have uh, you know a dedicated team that uh, serves the business brokerage industry and I would be happy to have our sales manager um, or our customer service uh, one of our client managers reach out to you and and uh, address whatever may not have been addressed in the past but thank you for your comment and um, 
I will make a note here to follow up with you, um, you. after afterwards. Sounds good. Yeah, and I want to. I want to. Uh, uh, I want to wish Adam a happy birthday. I, I work with Adam a lot there, and uh, uh, he did. He does a great job with these presentations. Uh, I, Bob, I think a few people missed at the beginning how I mean, we will make these slides available, this video available by uh, five o'clock today. But I know there's a full report, and I know you mentioned that. But do you mind repeating that because a few people are asking about, you know, and I think this is great information. Part of the the idea of this webinar and these these industry updates is to help you educate business owners and these statistics are, are really helpful and you could even run your own webinar so to speak using this information to encourage business owners and help be an educator to them so um bob where do we get that information the full report absolutely so as ron mentioned this will be this recording will be available and this summary deck um, will be available but if you want the full report you go to biz by cell um, and, and you can look in our footer and there's a link to the insight report. But again, the easiest way to find it is just go to Google and type in biz by cell insight report. It'll be the number one uh, result and you will go to the report homepage. And from there, you have links to the full survey results. You have links to that interactive uh, you know, insight report by market where you can look at transactions in your area and all as well the, the full data tables that are available by industry. Um, so everything's there, including all the archive of past reports. So um, that's where you find us. Well, we'll put a link in the, uh, the webinar details when we post it too. Um, the, the full report is, is, is very interesting. So I would, I would highly recommend that. I'm not sure if everybody knows that that comes out quarterly, but a very important report for our industry. And, and I agree, you guys get a lot of publicity and, and help promote the industry. So um, as an industry, I would encourage everyone to submit your comments and fill out the survey and, and do all that because that is very helpful as a as we as we promote to the outside of the industry uh to the press and all uh, that information is very useful so appreciate you guys doing that bob yeah and the Here's url you. if anybody wants the direct url it's bizbysell.com forward slash insight dash report perfect. and that'll bring you right there perfect all right um, we have Gregory on the line. Greg? Hi, um, my name is Greg Carafello. And um, can you hear me? First yes, one? hey, sure. Greg, how are yes. you doing? Good, Ron, how are you? Good. Um, uh, Bob, listen, very informative. It was great. And uh, I just have to disagree with the previous comment. I mean, I, I work with Madeline and some of the other people, and, you know, I think they're fantastic, to tell you the truth. So my service experience has been very positive. Um, well, thank you, Greg. Glad to hear that. Yeah. and. Uh, but we lean on biz by sell a lot, and uh, we, we obviously try to use it for its fullest advantages. My question to you is, what are the tools you have coming out as things continue to change with Sales Navigator, things like that? What else can you do for people like us that, to, grow our, to grow our listing base and to grow our, obviously, buyer base? Yeah, well, um, I mean, we're constantly looking at that and then reinvesting in the platform. Um, we do have some things coming up that um, I think uh, the industry will be happy to see we're, we're, uh, we're, we're working on better reporting so that you can see the, uh, the value that, uh, that we delivered to you in terms of both buyer uh, interest and uh, owner interest. But we do generate a, on a lot of uh, uh, seller leads and I think that you know, we're well known as a, a source of buyer leads in the industry, but I think uh, you probably have to talk to some of our elite members too. Uh, learn that we're also a large source of a seller lead. So we're, we're always looking at trying to find ways to uh, increase those. Um, and we have some things that uh, coming that should help in that regard. We also are working on streamlining, streamlining and improving the search experience on Disc by Cell. And we really believe that that's going to result in more engagement with the platform and more leads ultimately to our broker members. So these are things that you should start to see in the coming uh, months uh, on our platform. Um, so I hope that answers your question on that regard, Greg. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Greg. Okay, next up we're going to have, um, no, wrong one, sorry about that. And Bob, while we're bringing up the next guest, no wrong. Um, there we go. I was going to ask you uh, just real quick, Bob, the uh, people are asking if they can use the slides or the report, as long as they give credit to Biz by Cell, can they share this, the, the slides or the report, I mean, obviously the public link to the report would make sense, but um, 
I think people are looking Absolutely. at you. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you for that question. Actually, I forgot to bring that up on that slide, but um, Absolutely. And brokers do this all the time. And we, we, we encourage you to, you can take the charts and the charts have our logo on it. As long as you give us credit and we'd like a link back is, um, you know, be nice. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly uh, feel free to use this data to help you with your clients in terms of you know, gaining their confidence that it's a good time to sell, um, that there's opportunity out there. Uh, absolutely. Uh, the insight report is, is there for you to use um, as well with your kind of PR efforts. Yeah, maybe we can even uh, edit this video a bit, and, and that's something that people could share with business owners, just the presentation part. So we'll, we'll try to make that easy for people, um, give the proper uh, credit, and, and help business brokers educate business owners and encourage them, right? Um, so, yeah, great. And, and uh, Bob, your video goes in and out a little bit, uh, but I think you look, you, you, it looks like it's doing all right now, but the audio is going okay. great. So. All right, sorry about that. that. You might want I'm, to stop I, and start your video. Sometimes that helps, but. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid that I have, um, we're all right working from home, right? And my, <laughs> my daughters are doing online um, learning right now. And uh, <laughs> I think our, our bandwidth's being brought to its knees, even though I do have, <laughs> in theory, a gigabit here. Yeah. There we go. Um, we can hear you great. Can you, so. can you see me okay? We can, we can see a static picture at the moment and uh, we can hear you fine. fine. So we'll, we'll keep going. Okay, apologize. Uh, no it's worries. Good, it's a good, there we go. You're, you're back in action there. So um, anyway, I think we've got William on the line. Yes. Yeah, thanks, guys. This is very informative. This is the first one we've actually sat and watched. Um, I've got a team of two guys that work with me. Um, my question is, with the PPP loans, we're getting into the part with the closing attorneys. Have you, any of the three of you, heard how those are handled? You know, the attorneys are talking to me now thinking about, are they going to have to escrow that PPP loan amount until they've been officially forgiven? Or have you seen any of that as of yet? I think we have an expert on the line if he'll join us. We have Steve and Denny here. Steve, do you want to come on? Okay, I think he just went to the top of the queue. Let me grab him real quick for us. There he is. Okay. Steve, there he is. Hey, Steve. Hello, gentlemen. How are you? Good. Just for our audience, Steve's been our expert, uh, been giving us regular updates on the CARES Act uh, relief packages. So, Steve, go ahead. Outstanding presentation, Bob. Uh, really, Thank really you, good. Sir. Thanks for sharing Thank the information. My pleasure. Uh, can I ask the uh, the person to re restate the question? I heard you holler out my name, but I apologize. I was multitasking <laughs> okay. and, and want to make sure I got the question correct. <laughs> sure. Sure, sure, Steve. Thanks. Uh, my name is Bill Roland. I think I'm right here in your market with you. Um, oh, hi, Bill. How are you? Good, good. I don't think we've ever officially met, but we we work in the same circle. I know the name. Yeah, my, my question is, have you seen much of the, with the PPP loans? Our closing attorney, you know, has talked to me about, they're trying to find a way around, how do we do this? Are we going to escrow this, you know, out because they're not officially forgiven yet um, at the closings we've got coming up? Have you had to tackle any of that? As of Ab absolutely. And what I would tell you is um, you've got to work directly with the lenders and the lenders are the ones that make those decisions, right? So we've, we have had deals that have closed and we've had deals that have been closing postponed. And it's, uh, at this point, it's, it's whatever the lender will allow you to do. It's so case by case basis at this point. Correct. And we've seen different, we've seen different lenders react differently. Okay. Well, Steve, thanks for your help guys. Thanks for the platform, Steve, you and I'll get lunch someday. <laughs> Love to do that, Bill. Thanks for All the right. question. Thanks guys. Got. I see Ed Pendarvis' his hand up. He's next up. Good, good friend. I I haven't yeah. spoken to Ed in a while. Ed, you got to unmute yourself. But good afternoon, my friend. Hey, how y'all doing over there? Oh, we're doing excellent. Good to hear from you. Well, this is a great. Uh, they've got the whole main crowd right here between Biz by Sales and Business Brokerage Press. The reference guide's got everything you need as a business broker. Other than that, all he needs buyers and sellers. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> well, listen, we'll come through this. Uh, we got some challenges with this thing. On that last question you had, 
we got one with a PPP right now. We just have to escrow the money. Coming from the bank's okay, but we just got to escrow the money until it can be resolved. Because the government haven't even completed the saying what they need to have to get it released and stuff. So we're all kind of in uncharted waters. But Bob, after the program today, because I'll tell you, we're going to be busy, busy, busy if you just stick after it. Uh, biggest thing still goes right back. You got to have a good listings and a lot of listings. Uh, and keep working it. And more and more people going to need our services. Uh, thank you, Lord. A lot of good people all across the country that do business brokerage and know how to do it. Uh, but we've got the two main resources. I congratulate both of y'all for doing that. You add so much value to our industry. Uh, and uh, so we, we are fortunate to have that. Uh, Ron, thank you. Enjoyed putting this on. And Bob, great presentation today. Always like your statistics. Uh, it always helps us, and we, I quote y'all all the time. And if your statistic doesn't fit, I just change the statistic, so we make, make it work right. <laughs> so it sounds good. All right. That's marketing. Eighty-two percent or eighteen percent, whatever we need to do there. That's right. Uh, listen, everything's one on one. Still dealing with a buyer and a seller, and so it's so important to their family and selling this business or buying the business. If we take care of our clients and help them get to their goal line. Uh, the Lord will take care of us. And we're in a good business at the right time, I think. Well, thank you, Ed. Appreciate the uh, kind words. Well, thank you, Ed. That was a... Uh, Thanks for coming on, Ed. Well, spoken. if people don't know Ed Pendarvis, I can't imagine people don't know, but there's new people and there's international people. Ed Pendarvis is the founder of Sunbelt Business Brokers. Um, he's known our family since the 70s <laughs> and maybe before, so... Uh, Ed, thank you for all that you've done for the industry. And uh, now we got no man. This is like legend hour here. Uh, Larry, yeah, Hughes. Larry Hughes. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, I've I've uh, been called a lot worse. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, Bob, that very good presentation. I've got a question for you, and that, but I have a comment too on the on the question from the previous person about the PPP money, and we're uh, like Ed. Uh, we're in the process of, uh, of uh, closing, and our client now has used all of the $580,000 that he got. The bank is going to allow us to close, but we have to, uh, we have to escrow the money uh, because the, the, the actual form, the SBA tells us, and I've talked directly to them, the, actual, the proper form that you have to have to apply for forgiveness is not out yet. There's one out, but it's not the proper one. So they're telling us the middle of August, but but we're never either way. We're we'll close, and we just have to escrow that money. And, uh, yeah, Larry, I just heard this morning, um, August tenth. <clears throat> August tenth. Okay. Well, that, that's that was the number I heard this morning, and yeah. we Good. we all know it keeps changing, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. that that'll be great. Um, Bob, you mentioned it the first, and uh, and I didn't write it down, but that uh, on the inside report there were opportunities for brokers to maybe sponsor, or, or on, is that what you said on that? And well, uh, we're we're looking for broker perspective in uh, in our you know uh, write up in our commentary and our analysis. So oh, oh um, I see. We, we're, uh, you know, it's not a sponsorship thing. We're, we're okay. actively trying to make sure that brokers are part of the narrative. Uh, you're, you're closest to the market. You are doing the deals. You guys know exactly what's going on on the, on the ground, you know, uh, on the, on the uh, front lines of, of this, right? And we're, we're just seeing it from an online digital macro marketplace kind of standpoint. So we, we invite uh, broker participation and, and are always looking for brokers to tell us what they're seeing in the marketplace. So. If you have contributions and when we do Q3, you know, we always are trying to put in a, a you know, weave in that um, kind of perspective. Okay. All right. Well, good. Well, good. Well, that, that, uh, and then do I just send an email to, to biz myself? Is that how? Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. You can, you can reach out to, um, to use a contact form. We'll make sure everything gets routed to the right people. So, uh, okay. But you just mentioned that, uh, you know, Bob mentioned during, this webinar that you're looking for broker perspective and uh, you know contact us and we'll, we'll be in touch. Can I mention that uh, as, as a long, long, long time user, a subscriber that I, I get preferential treatment? 
We're always looking for the, the uh, most experienced uh, voices. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, thanks, guys. Good job again. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Thank Good you. to hear from you. Thank you. And, and uh, actually, Larry, to answer your question, Steve Denny just chimed in, said the SBA told them uh, August 10th, and that, the, and that will be the day the SBA forgiveness portal is scheduled to open. Okay. I think we're out of hand raisers. We're going to go to our Q and A. <laughs> Are there any more hand raisers out there? No, no, yeah. not right now. Bob, you somebody was to... asking in the chat. Um, can you maybe? I know this. The the because I, I want to clarify too is that you were mentioning uh, kind of LoopNet coming into the family. Is that is that a separate subscription? What's the syndication of listings in that regard? Yep. No, it's not a separate subscription. It's part of your uh, broker network membership. So um, our, our network members uh, will have their listings automatically pushed. You enter everything on Biz by Sell, and it's automatically syndicated and pushed to BizQuest, to LoopNet, and all of our partner sites. So it's it's part of your membership. It's not an extra cool. extra cost. Is that automatic, or do you have to go into your listings and kind of click on that as a? No, it's it's auto it's automatic. It's automatic. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Good. Um, Randy's asking, um, let me double check. I don't know if we've got a question or a comment here. It says, side note, our local BBS rep in North California, Madeline has, oh, it's been great. Okay, it was a comment. And Randy Madeline's was just thanking two, you. Two, well, <laughs> two yeah. shout outs to Madeline today. Yeah, Maddie's great. Oh, she, shout outs. She's, uh, been, she's been working with a lot of our uh, customers directly on uh, helping them uh, understand uh, the platform, get the most out of their investment in the platform. So, uh, yeah, we're we're really happy to have her. Okay, great. Hey, folks, keep if you can keep your questions over to um, Q and A, we'd appreciate it. Um, and rather than using chat, um, Bob's asking us how is leveraging your Ublack connection benefiting the the, the clients? Do they do, do you see any benefits uh, now that you've added LoopNet in? Uh, absolutely. Um, it just, it's a more reach. We're finding, you know, buyers that, uh, you know, may not have you know, come to Biz by Sell or Biz Quest. And the traffic's really ramping there. It's starting to be a, a noticeable contribution to the total. So um, it's just more reach, right? I and mean, that's our, our, our belief is we want to put you in front of the, the, the biggest audience of, of business buyers that we can. And we know that on LoopNet, there are a lot of uh, small business um, people on LoopNet. We know that because it's, sure. it's a sister company of ours. And there's a lot of tenants looking for their next space. Many of them are uh, open to buying businesses, but they may not have come in with that kind of mindset. They may have come in from a space mindset. And then they say, oh, there's businesses here too. And so they end up uh, you know, exploring that area and reaching out. So it's a good fit. Okay. Um, so Earlier on, Amy Cole had asked, uh, sure. is there a price range on the business that you were reporting on? Was it uh, like under $2 million or does it go up to a certain amount? Oh. You know, we, I, I, um, I don't have that information uh, uh, at the tip of my fingers. I do know that when we, when we do kind of crunch the numbers on the inside report, we, we do a couple of things. One is we do throw out really you know, things that are clearly you know, data entry errors or, or just too low to be realistic or things that have unreasonable ratios of like, you know, cash flow to price, you know, sale price and things like that. There's some logic and math behind it to make sure that we have a good data set. Um, there may be that something on the high end too. If somebody puts, you know, sold it for a billion dollars, we're going to throw that out of the data set. So um, I don't know specifically what those limits are though, but they, you know, the things that would make sense for our industry. Yeah. Uh, someone's asking, um, with the LoopNet edition, will that give uh, everybody access to the LoopNet search stats on valuations? It does not. It, it, um, it, it, it simply um, makes our listings available. Uh, again, you enter them on Biz by Sell. You can find them on that tab on the homepage of LoopNet, and you can search them and, and, and you know, contact those businesses. But um, that's the extent of what it includes. Okay. I think, we, uh, I think we're kind of done with questions right at the two o'clock hour. I do want to ask this one question because it came in about, I, I love that the webinars are international and I specifically want to say hi to Debbie because uh, she, she's been a regular follower and 
Uh, she's asking if, if any of your sites are, are in other countries, specifically she was asking about Africa. But I, I think people think of Biz by Sales as, as a US business primarily, but I, I know that you serve some other countries now. So what is the international presence for the company? We are primarily a North America company and, and uh, we do have some listings. Uh, there's the ability to add and um, search listings in other parts of the world, but you know, we don't have a huge volume of those. You can certainly check it out and see what we have there. It's easy to search that on our site. Is there a biz um, by sell in New Zealand or am I imagining that when I spoke to somebody? Not, not, uh, not that we operate, no. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> uh, there was a site that kind of seemed to be representing themselves in a similar way. Uh, mm. that well, we do have a couple more raised hands. Do we want to take a couple uh, minutes? Think, we... Has Crespo been on already or not? I forget. He's been, yeah, he's coming, but he's come back in and Jonathan Bates. Why don't we bring Jonathan yeah, we on? Yeah, a few for... minutes and take okay. questions. Sure. Jonathan, if you can unmute yourself and ask your question, make your comment, that'd be great. Uh, I apologize, guys. I was just enjoying this uh, seminar and first out on accident. So you guys are amazing. Thank you for your input. Well, now you got to ask a question. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Enjoy the rest of your week, Jonathan. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. And um, let's spring on Daniel. Oh, nope, Daniel dropped his hand. Okay. He did. So. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> I, know, they, they, I think I don't know uh, the, the virtual hand raising. Uh, Ashley, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, how are you? Oh, hold on. There he is. Can you hear me now? We can. Good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon, Mr. West. Thank you. And uh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you guys for uh, great services, all three of you. Um, Bob House, I got to say once again, uh, excellent service. Uh, the question that I was going to ask was actually answered when uh, you guys had spoke about uh, um, joining with LoopNet. And I'm glad I joined this because today I was going to put an ad and join with LoopNet and I don't have to, to do that now. I could just co continue with uh, you guys. So I'm glad I, I was at the Zoom meeting. And then also I wanted to say one more thing. Um, when my team OI core uh, biz by sell, I want to say everyone has always been excellent. I mean, any question that we need. And I just wanted to say that props, total cap, captain and a half for you guys. And, and we're going to continue to do more business as we grow. So that way we can uh, continue to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to enjoy your services. So thank you guys. I'm going to be out now, get, get on my way to get back to work. And thank you for allowing me to say this. I really mean it. Thank you, Okay. Awesome. Thank Have you. Have a great thank rest you. of the week. Thank you, sir. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. And, and let me just follow up on one uh, thing that made me think about is in regards to LoopNet versus Biz by Sell. Um, you know, if you are marketing property for sale, um, and it's really about the property, you, you should be marketing it on LoopNet. Um, if you have a business for sale and you cannot disclose the location of that business, which is usually the case, um, you can't market that on LoopNet. You, you, your only option is to market that on Biz by Sell. And so we let you do that and we let you, and then we, then we push it to uh, LoopNet in that area of the site. And so um, I guess the takeaway is, is, you know, there are times to advertise on LoopNet and that's like if you're selling property and that's your focus. Um, but if you're selling business, um, if that business is in a lease situation, for sure it's on biz by sell and especially if it's confidential. But if there's a uh, business for sale with property, you may want to consider advertising in both ways. Mm -hmm. uh, it raises a couple of questions for me, Bob. So if I put a business listing in this by sell and the location is confidential, does that mean it won't push over to LoopNet? No, it does push over to LoopNet. Okay. It looks largely the same as it will look on this by sell. There'll be, there's no map and there's no pin showing you, you know, the location. We, as you I know, we you. let you have complete control over how, how yeah. confidential you want to be in the listings. And sometimes yeah. you want to be really confidential and other times you actually you know, some people want to be less confidential because they appear in more searches. And there's always a trade-off between exposure and confidentiality. And right. the more you're willing to tell where you're at, people do search by very specific things, by, by cities right. and, and things like that. So okay. it's just, you know, but we leave that control in your hands. Okay. Perfect. That's it. 
Awesome. Well, we, uh, we'll do a little wrap up here. Appreciate everyone's insights today, especially Bob. Thanks for joining us. And I, I hope we can make this regular thing. Um, we will be having um, further webinars next week. Uh, Bob, um, not Bob, was Bob, uh, uh, John Howe, thank you, <laughs> Brain, um, is going to be doing his uh, monthly interview. Um, and we're excited to have that next Tuesday. Um, and next Thursday, uh, George and I are going to be doing a webinar on uh, doing virtual meetings and webinars and kind of learning how we do all the things that we do at Business Broker Express as far as producing and, and, and allowing people to do that themselves and take something like what Bob is doing and present information to the business owners and the centers of influence that they have. So look at our website, businessbrokerspress.com. You'll see all the upcoming and past webinars there. We'll have this posted along with the slides and a link to the, the reports that uh, Bob was mentioning on our website by five o'clock today. Um, Bob, thanks once again. And thanks everyone for joining us. We really appreciate all the comments. And um, if you have any ideas for future webinars, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll be in touch soon. Thanks so much. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys.